Hi, this is Marnie Pearson and Sue Painter back with the online business reality show, Marnie and Sue's Peep Show, where we pull back the curtains on our businesses and give you an inside look on what we're up to in our businesses. And Sue's been traveling. You've been in all kinds of classes. And what do you what have you been pumping into that head? <laughs> I've been pumping a lot of things into the head. More about that in a minute. But um, we thought that we might start today with Marnie showing you a video that she made that um, it's kind of a funny video, but it is about product creation because you know, sometimes you just have to have fun with your business and actually that gets people talking a little bit. So let's see if Marnie, if we can show it. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is pretty sarcastic, but we, <laughs> we will go with it. Oh, it's the uh, online business reality show. <laughs> yeah. This is a reality show. This is what I do to entertain myself. I've been sick and I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. So I'm going to open this baby with a uh, program we got. Something a little better than how about Windows Media Player. All right. Can you see it? Hi, I'm Marty Pearson. Yeah. Have you been through something difficult? Maybe you had a kid that drove you bonkers. Or maybe you had the ex-husband from hell. Or maybe you've been through some really difficult health challenge and you figured out how to be healthy and eat good and feel great. Or maybe you've dropped 52 pounds and now you can easily show other people how to do it too. If you had a hard luck story and you figured out how to get out of it, there are other people who would pay you to find out how you did it. Yeah, that's right. Because there are other people with the kid that drives them bonkers or the ex that won't leave them alone or the person who needs to drop the 52 pounds or figure out how to be healthy and strong in a natural way. The trick is you've got to turn it into a product or program that you sell online. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You don't need a business degree. You don't need to know squat about marketing. You don't even have to know about sales. You don't have to know about sales. I can show you, because I'm the worst salesperson in the world, as you can tell from this video, <laughs> that I don't know anything about sales. But I can sell products and programs. I've been doing it online since 1994 when I wrote a book on how to run a computer training business from home, stuck it online, and people started sending me checks in the mail. It's the truth. You can make money by teaching other people how to get out of the hole that you dug for yourself and how you got out of it and how they can too. That's where I come in. I show you how to take what you've been through, turn it into a virtual product or program, an information product of some kind. It could be a training, it could be a video, it could be an audio series, it could be a workbook sort of thing, it could be a home study course, it might be a retreat, it might be a live event. It could take any form that you want it to. I show you how to do that through my templated step-by-step -step system. I hold your hand every step of the way. We create a sales page for it. We help you create a preview presentation to sell it. And you can be making money from this hard luck story of yours. You really seriously can. My students do it every day. Most of the people who take my training within three or four weeks have more than recouped their investment in my training. And they're out here making money from their hard luck story. They have figured out how to help other people get through what they've been through. And I just help them package it up, put it online and make money from it from now on. So you can do it too. What are you waiting for? Well, you could be making money from your hard luck story. So just scroll on down the page and sign up for my training. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I've lost your, now I've lost your screen. I don't know where the heck you are. That's okay. Maybe so there you are. There you are. Okay. It feels so weird. Can I use that? It feels, <laughs> yeah, I think you should use it because it's controversial and it stands out and it'll make people laugh and it'll make people remember you. And so I would do that. You had me cracking up. It's like, well, she would be fun to work with. Plus, obviously, I think, but I do think it's kind of bull crap that you say you don't know how to sell anything. <laughs> But I think that's really cool. I mean, I've done a few of those before too, just like, you know, doing something totally different and off the wall and why not use it and see what kind of reaction. It would be a great test. Put it out there and see if it gets more reaction and more buy-in than the other things that you've been doing to advertise your content creation stuff. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not, you know? <laughs> 
at least it got me on my funk. I've been hacking up a lung for two weeks. So, God, what if you got pneumonia or what? I don't think so. I'm on an antibiotic, so I don't. I think it's just some croupy thing. Oh God, it's summertime. It's time for all that stuff to be gone from you. Yeah, be gone. Go away. You need to. You need to be out in the sunshine. Maybe that'll help you heal a little bit. Yeah. That sounds no. like a good idea. <laughs> well, somebody it, let me come down to Florida or something. Or I know. Are you in Nashville? Well, this, is, this is our migration week for um, for those of you who are watching who don't know. Bill and I spend um, six or seven months of the year at the beach in Florida on the Gulf Coast, and we own we own a home here. And uh, then we spend five or six months a year, usually the summer and the early fall, in Nashville, where we have another home. And this is the migration week, if we can manage to get everything in order before we leave. Um, we're supposed to migrate up to Nashville on Wednesday with Jake in tow, and um, we're waiting for Bill's vehicle to get out of the body shop because he backed into a mailbox and so we're waiting we had to wait for the insurance adjuster and now we're having to wait for the body work to get done and we are supposed to get the car tomorrow so we can travel Wednesday so we'll see and then we're waiting for um, Bill's lost a lot of weight we've both been doing fit for life and we've both lost weight but he's down where he needs to be now and so we took a bunch of his clothes to the alterations lady down here. There's a really great one. And now she's like, okay, your clothes will all be ready tomorrow. So if he can get his car and his clothes, <laughs> then we will be coming home on Wednesday to Nashville for a while. And if he can't get his car and his clothes, then I guess we won't come up till Saturday because I have work to do Thursday and Friday with clients. So I can't be in the car traveling, you know, either one of those days up. So this is migration week. So I've been in Scottsdale. I was in Scottsdale Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and flew home Thursday. And then I was in Tampa on Saturday and Sunday. And now I'm in our home here in Bradenton today. And then Wednesday, supposedly, we'll be traveling to Nashville. And then June the 5th, I've got a meeting in Baltimore. And I just got invited to take part in a meeting in San Francisco on July 11th and 12th. And I'm debating about whether I want to do that. I really don't like hauling over to the West Coast. It's a hard flight, but I might do that. We'll kind of see. So things are things have been busy for sure. So anyway, I don't know what that has to do. Travel alone. Yeah, this was the, when I went to Scottsdale last Monday. Um, this was the first trip I made alone in three years, uh, ever since the accident with my leg. My PT guy here in Florida, Frank, um, was very, very nervous about me going alone. I usually travel with Bill to help me, and um, he made me take my he made me drag out my cane and my leg brace, neither one of which I've used around here in a while, to take with me in case I got in trouble. And I won't say it was it was easy. I came back pretty exhausted and pretty sore but I did do it so that was that was a good thing for me to prove that I could do that um, and as soon as the peep shows over I'm heading over to Frank for PT today so we'll take a look at my leg and he'll see how he thinks it did so but anyway none of that has anything to do with business really um, we really I had a good time at Allie's repower workshop and I think one of the things that I liked about it was that we had a conversation about when you are in business and things are feeling like they're slipping or they're getting harder and harder because the online world seems to be getting harder to get visibility as Marnie and I have talked about before. We talked about what can you do that instead of adding more and more and more into the path you're on like change the path and just take a really sharp right turn and do something totally different and get out of the box. So we spent a lot of time talking with each other and giving each other ideas about right turns and what those right turns could be. And, you know, people were talking about things when they just said, no more of this, it's not working anymore, I'm not going to do it. And um, that was really beneficial to me. It gave me a lot of ideas and um, it made me think about 
what for my clients might work as something that they can just say, okay, instead of trying to make this path work, what can I do that just shifts things and goes off over here and does things in a different way? So we were all laughing at this meeting about um, launching because launches have gotten so elaborate and so big and so out of control and you know it's like rocket ships to the stars and diamonds coming from the heavens and you know live events and all this stuff and it's just it's costing more and more and more to do these launches which of course means you've got to raise your price point because you've got to recapture all of that plus you've got to make enough sales when you do such a big launch so we were all kind of into this anti-launch mode just like go do something simple and you know buy the advertising for it because buying the advertising to draw people to you through Facebook or pay-per-click or whatever else is actually cheaper than doing these huge monstrous launches so there was some conversation about that so I really enjoyed it I got to meet um, I, I got to meet the woman who founded Hint Water uh, and she really uh, just blew my mind about how she basically created her own marketing channels and distribution channels for this water product rather than beating her head against the wall trying to get it in grocery stores she just took a right turn and started selling it within uh, the Silicon Valley and other places in the businesses and then that drove the popularity and people started asking for it in stores so she was a pretty amazing woman to listen to and I was really um, glad to meet her and get a chance to listen to her so and got to connect with a bunch of people I've known for a while which was real good too so um, so uh, let's see what else Marnie would you want to talk about do you want to talk about what do you do to get back on track when you've been feeling pitiful for a couple of weeks and not like working at all because we all do go through that sometimes yeah um. <laughs> I don't know. I have, I've just let myself rest some um, because I, I just couldn't hardly talk. So, you know, I had to take a rest. Yeah. So, I uh, watched a lot of Netflix. <laughs> are, you, are you done with all of your interviews for the doTERRA people now? Um, I'd like to interview a few more. I've got about seven of them done. And uh, I'd like to get about three more if I could before I start putting it all together. Yeah. So. Anybody got any doTERRA people that I ought to interview, let me know. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I mean, I know a couple of, well, actually, um, there's one that I know who I think might just now be a new diamond, and she built her her business really rapidly, and that's Kyla Fennell, who lives out in Oklahoma City, or in Oklahoma, uh, Tulsa, I think, not Oklahoma City. Um, she and her husband, Bob, who is a chiropractor, are friends of mine and were both in an alley mastermind group with me back a couple of years ago. And she travels all over and she's built this huge team like really, really quickly. So she might be a good person to interview. I can introduce the two of you if you'd like. Um, she'd probably be up for that. Hi, Jay. Jakey just got back from staying over at the vet for the last three days while we were gone to Tampa. So it's good to see my little creature again, um, walking around looking for his tree, which I think he's actually lost. Jake, it's over there. <laughs> so, you're looking thinner still. I mean, every time I see you, you look thinner. So you're. Uh, I, you know, we're still doing Fit for Life and. As I said, Bill is where he needs to be, so he doesn't. He's now starting to add back in more calories and more meals, but I'm still on the five of the little meals and packets every day, plus one, what they call lean and green. And I'm kind of getting. I've been doing it for four months now, I guess, maybe four and a half months. Um, but I've got. I mean, I, I think you know, I would be doing it. The rest of my freaking life if I were really to get down skinny 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 but I think we've both lost about 40 pounds so um, you know we'll we'll see how that goes it's, for me it's a matter of does it help my leg and does it take any of the pain out of my leg and Bill's cholesterol actually went down almost 50 points 
So it's a, it's a very low glycemic way of eating. So anyway, if any of y'all are interested in that, you can ping me, you can email me, sue at confidentmarketer.com and I'll be glad to tell you, but it's Dr. Wayne Anderson's Fit for Life. And you can find him on Facebook or Wayne D. Anderson, I think is the website. And it's really good. He was a cardiologist that decided he was treating people after they were already having heart attacks and why not treat them and get their health in order. And so he's had people, you know, completely change their lives and go from being diabetic to non-diabetic, all with this low glycemic thing. So we'll see how it, how, how much longer I continue. Every now and then I just like, I'm, I want a meal and I don't want to mess with this anymore. But, but is it, it's is it on your knees? I mean, um, can you tell I, it's taken the pain down a little bit, um, but it's still hurts and probably will you know forever for as long as it lasts anyway so i guess we'll see it's an improvement but i'm hoping for more improvement as time goes on um i'm trying to think what else oh you know uh one thing we could talk about marnie is um i have my own system of how i work and how i block my time and how i have my little to-do list and i personally even though i have a to-do list on my calendar i also have a spiral notebook where I keep notes to myself about things I want to do in the future or notes to myself about things that I want to remember. I use Evernote, but while I'm on the computer, I don't want to flip back and forth into Evernote. So I just have something I can write on right beside the computer, right beside my laptop or my Mac all the time. But Bill was looking for ways to create his to-do list. And while we both used to do it in Outlook, we don't really want to do that anymore because as far as we can tell, that's not something like Evernote that will work across platforms. And we're on so many different platforms. I go from my iPhone to my PC to my Mac uh, Book Pro uh, to the iPad and back to my phone. So I'm like working across platforms and he does too with his real estate business. So um, we were checking out Todoist, which is T-O-D-O-I-S-T, -O -O Todoist. Um, Evernote really doesn't have a good to-do list function and other people have mentioned I've posted something on Facebook today and people suggested to me Wanderlust and uh, Trello and Basecamp but it, we don't want project management we just want a simple to-do list that will work across platforms so um, we don't want something like Basecamp uh, Asana which is really another pro product management system project management system so I don't know what you guys look use but more and more and more for me and for my husband too we want something that will be there for us in an app no matter whether we're on our phone or our iPad or our PC or a Mac or whatever we're on so um, if you guys have suggestions for that or if you're looking for something that is a good to-do list for you um, that works across platforms you might try some of those that I've mentioned and, and I think there were some other ones mentioned too but I can't think I'll have to pull up Facebook and see if I can figure them out but Marnie do you know what do you use for a to-do list um paper and a pencil <laughs> I thought you were a high-tech person you're not a high-tech person Nothing about crossing it off that I just can't give up so <laughs> yeah well I do still as I say I really 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 do like um I'm trying to pull this up real quick. I really, really do like uh, using Evernote, and I use Evernote a lot. And I do use my spiral notebook by my side. I think I'm just old-fashioned enough that I just want to do that. But more and more, I'm looking for things that are up in the cloud so that no matter which device I'm on, all the stuff I need is there. So I use Evernote a lot. I use Dropbox a lot. I use Dropbox for my team so that we can share information back and forth. Oh, that's something else I can talk about. And um, so people, I'm just opening up. People said Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O, Rike, W-R-I-K-E, Rike. I'm not familiar with Rike. Basecamp, um, Asana, um, Wanderlust, Wonderlust, W-U-N-D-E-R-L-I-S-T, Wonderlust. Um, let's see if anybody has mentioned uh tick tick dot com tick tick is a to-do list that's that uh, my friend pam lair who develops apps for people mentioned um 
And so those are some of the ones, if you're looking for something like that, those are some of the ones that um, have been suggested. And so for what that's worth, um, and I found a couple of other, I've done a couple of other little things lately, like LastPass came out, I've been using LastPass for years, keeps all my passwords for the 50,000 different things I've got accounts for. And there's a LastPass premium now, and it's only $12 a year. So it's not like it's expensive. And so you can put an app on your phone and it will also work across platforms. Because I was always trying to get into something on my phone when I was in the car away from my computer and I couldn't remember my password because I can't keep them all in my head. There's so many hundreds of them now. So um, now I have LastPass on my iPhone. So to me, that was $12. Anything that's 12 bucks, I'm going to try, I'll try that if it makes life easier for me. And then I finally broke down and paid the 20, I think it was $24 for the year for uh, that Adobe file converter that'll take PDFs and flip them back into Word or Excel for you so that you can make changes and make a PDF again. Because I was constantly sending things over to Mika and saying, okay, this is a PDF and I need it in Word so that I can mess with it and change it. And she would have to convert it back for me. But now it just happens when I pull up Adobe, there's a little converter over on the right. And I figure 24 bucks a year isn't going to kill me. So Anyway, those are some tools I've been using, but you're not a tool person. I thought you really liked using a lot of apps, Marnie. <laughs> oh, I use some. I'm just saying for to-do lists, I just write it down on a piece of paper. But, yeah. Um, I'm not, I, I use Excel spreadsheets, to be honest with you. If I'm got yeah. like, if I'm keeping track of a bunch of projects or something and and it has multiple to do action items on it. I, I just use a spreadsheet. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an option too, for sure. There's a lot, I'm not an Excel power user by any means. Um, but I have heard people who are really into Excel t telling me that they can do all kinds of wonderful things with it. So that's probably something that would work for sure. Um, you want to see if we have anybody who has questions for us. I didn't get anything ahead of time. Okay. Um, I got an I love this on my crazy video. Evidently, that's a thumbs up from good. Carolyn. How oh, good. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Carolyn. So if I put that out and everybody thinks I'm horrible, it'll be Carolyn's fault. Carolyn and Sue suggested I do it. Right? <laughs> I don't see any other questions. Um, there is one thing I'll talk about, which is how valuable our time is as entrepreneurs. And maybe that'll be our last thing for today. Um, Bill and I went to Tampa for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And what we were doing was really for him more than for me, except that it's probably something we'd work in a little bit together. And that was, it was a three-day workshop about um, flipping houses because there's a lot of opportunity here in Florida from some of these old houses on the water that, uh, you know, people have let go to rack and ruin and they're up in their nineties and they paid $15,000 for them 50 years ago. And, you know, if you could get them at a decent price and rehab them, you could make them into something and make some profit. So we've been kind of interested in doing that. Um, we've already bought and sold one condo, but we didn't really do it as a flip. We lived in it for two years, two winters, and then we sold it last May. We sold it. So this, you know, these people were aggressive salespeople and they had their upsells and it always tickles me to watch that because I have been to so many live events and I've been on stage in so many live events that I understand how the system works and how you take a person from a button seat to an upsell. But in this case, their upsell was a huge amount of money. It was $34,000 or $44,000. And no way in hell would Bill and I ever do that. We don't need to do that. But it was interesting to watch them push people and kind of play on their fears and doubts. But so I, I managed to last through the first day and I managed to last through the second day. And the third day we got there. And first of all, the room was like an iceberg. And I had every day I wore jackets and hats and shoes and socks and almost had on gloves. I don't know why people keep their rooms so cold in big hotels around here. But any, it's not that hot here yet. But anyway, um, the guy started out in the morning and he just went on and on and on about how wealthy he was and how many houses he owned and how many mountains he owned. And, and I don't even know. I mean, it was just over the top. And after about two hours of this, 
I was okay. like, I'm not learning a freaking thing. This is a giant waste of my time. And I've been gone for a week and I have a shit pot, excuse my French, of work to do. So I just, and I never travel anywhere without one of my computers. So I had my MacBook Pro with me in my briefcase. So I just stood up and I went down to the desk and I rented myself a two room suite in the hotel to work in for the rest of the day. And then when Bill was done at five o'clock, I packaged up and came home and I put that on Facebook and I got a lot of reaction to it. It's like people were like, you know, some people were like, you would rent a room for just like basically six hours. And I'm like, damn straight. My time is valuable. I mean, I can get more done in six hours than most people can do in three days. But I'm not going to wait the whole day, especially after I've already been out of the office from Monday all the way through till Sunday to begin with. So it's like as entrepreneurs, we have to really protect our time and really think about how are we spending our days and is it adding value to our business or is it wasting our time? Have we already learned what we can learn in an event and we need to go implement then? Because we had things then already that we wanted to start implementing. So, you know, I rented a room, went upstairs, had a big desk and, you know, set myself up and started looking at how do we lay out our first project and tried to catch up from, I think I had 4,000 emails from the week that I had yet to get through. So anyway, protect your time and really feel like you're worth it. You know, if you are wasting your time all day long sitting in a room, you're, it's just not bringing you any income and it's, and it's kind of clouding your mind and not even keep you focused on what it is you want to, do in service to your clients or creating a new thing. So my advice is don't tolerate it. Go away and get something productive done. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yeah, most people would just say about how bad it was. They wouldn't have right. really thought to do something. I mean, productive. first of all, it was freezing. Second of all, I was, I mean, I put this thing on Facebook and I said, I would rather spend my time working on creating my own wealth instead of listening to somebody I don't even know brag about his. And to me, when people brag that much, it causes me to question how true is it anyway? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't need to see pictures of all that stuff. And I don't know, it's just weird. So anyway, that's what I did. And some people on Facebook were like, Oh man, this is a great example. We really love that you like, you know, kept care, watched your time and made it productive. So, that's my, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Marie, I hope you get feeling better. I'm sorry to hear you've been so under the weather. Oh, well, thanks. I, so I, come, get up I, come, I know if I come crawling past the Ringgold exit on Wednesday <laughs> and it's raining and cold, I'm going to turn around and go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not too cold. <laughs> We have next, our next peep show. Um, let me pull up my calendar. Oh, it's at 4.30 on Sunday. <laughs> it was at the 26th, I think. I think Tuesday. So it's two, next Tuesday, the 26th at 4.30, y'all. And um, that is the day after Memorial Day. The day after Memorial Day. And remember, if you can't be live and you want to send us a question to sue at confidentmarketer.com ahead of time, we'll be glad to answer your question live. Um, and we appreciate your um, being here and watching today. Yep. Thanks a lot. All right. Take uh, care. Oh, jo I, I did another comment. Joanne oh. loved my video. <laughs> oh, good. Hi, Joanne. I loved it too. I think it's great. So, Marty, yes. I'll be looking for that video on Facebook here in about an hour. Okay. It'll be up. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya.